Hello and welcome back to MLab 1101, Introduction to Clinical Laboratory Science. My name is Dustin Scott Brewster, and this is going to be the sixth of our six-part presentation series on Unit 5 of this course, Clinical Laboratory Testing. To find the objectives for this presentation, I'll log on to Blackboard. On the left-hand side, select the Schedule tab, scroll down to Unit Number 5, and you'll find the objectives for this presentation. Blood bank, more formally known as immunohematology, is a critically important department in the clinical laboratory. Sometimes referred to as transfusion medicine, technicians and technologists are responsible for accurately identifying patients' blood types and assuring the transfusion of compatible donor blood products. Because of the risk of potentially transfusing incompatible blood, it is vital that blood bank operators be properly trained. This includes understanding basic blood bank terminology such as the donor, who is the person donating blood to be transfused in the patient. The patient or recipient is the person receiving blood products from the donor. And the blood product or unit is a component of blood to be transfused in the patient. One such blood product is whole blood that has not been separated into its respective constituents. Another type of blood product are packed red blood cells that have been separated from the platelets and the liquid portion or plasma of the blood. The plasma or liquid portion of the blood has been separated from the cellular components, including red cells and platelets. And the last component that we commonly see in blood banks are platelets, which are the cellular component of blood that function to bind together to form a clot. A blood bank is the study of immune reactions between antigens on the surface of red cells with antibodies found in plasma. The primary responsibilities of the blood bank are to ensure accurate identification of donor and recipient antigens and antibodies, and to also identify units of donor blood that will not elicit an immune reaction in the patient or recipient. There are four major blood types that are determined by antigens found on the surface of red cells. The first blood type is blood type A, which is the result of antigens, A antigens on the surface of their red cells. When a patient belongs to blood type A, they have A antigens present on the surface of their red cells and their plasma contains antibodies against anti-B because they do not contain an antigen to elicit an immune reaction to this antibody, anti-B, they carry anti-B in their plasma. Our next blood type, blood type B, is the result of B antigens on the surface of these people's red blood cells. Because blood group B people do not have A antigen present, their plasma will contain anti-A. Our next blood group is when individuals have both A and B antigens present on the surface of their red cells. Because these people have both A and B antigens present on their red cells, they will produce neither A or B in their plasma. Our last blood group is blood group O, which is the result of these people having neither A or B antigen on the surface of their red cells. Because these individuals have neither A or B antigens present on their red cells, they will produce antibodies to both A and B antigens. Each of these RBC antigens can result in four possible blood types. However, in addition to the four major blood types produced from A and B antigens, we must also account for the RH factor. In addition to those four major blood groups, each of these blood groups can be either RH positive or RH negative. RH is the result of a D antigen present on the surface of red cells. An RH blood grouping is actually much more complicated, but we'll stop for
for simplicity at this point. So we have four major blood types, A, B, AB, and O. In addition, we can have a D antigen present, giving us a positive RH factor. This gives us twice as many blood types. We now have A positive, B positive, AB positive, and O positive, or no D antigen present, and a negative RH factor, giving us A negative, B negative, AB negative, or O negative. To look at that on a graph, RH positive patients will not produce anti-D in their plasma. When the D antigen is present, they will not produce an antibody against it. So we can have A positive, B positive, AB positive, and O positive. Or individuals can lack the D antigen, and because of this, they will produce antibodies against an antigen they don't have. So we can have A negative, B negative, AB negative, or O negative red cells. When A antigen is present, you would expect to produce anti-B antibodies in their patient's plasma. When B antigens are present, these patients would naturally produce anti-A antibodies. When A and B antigens are present, these individuals in their plasma should produce neither A or B antibodies. And when neither A or B antigen are present, both A and B antibodies should be produced in the patient's plasma. So where do the blood products come from for donation? This begins with a screening process where donors will come in, they will have their blood pressure checked to make sure it's not too elevated, as well as their hematocrit to make sure that they have an appropriate volume of cellular components in their blood. Next, a medical questionnaire will be asked to screen for high risk activities where a patient may be more likely to carry a communicable disease. And once this process is completed, the collection process begins where donor collection can occur in a whole blood donation where the components are not separated or an apheresis donation where blood products are separated into either packed red blood cells, plasma, or platelets. Once this is complete, it's taken to the lab for separation. If it's whole blood, it needs to be separated and pooled into the respective red cell, plasma, or platelet constituents. Or if it was an apheresis donation, no further separation is necessary. Once the separation process is complete, the laboratory testing can begin to test for communicable diseases such as hepatitis B, hepatitis C, HIV, syphilis, additional red cell antibodies or antigens that can elicit an immune reaction, West Nile virus, sickle cell trait or disease, Chagas disease, and most recently, the American Association of Blood Bank required that blood donation centers start to test for Zika virus. This results in three major blood products. Packed red blood cells are stable for 42 days at 1 to 6 degrees Celsius. Plasma is stable for a year if stored at minus 18 degrees Celsius. And because platelets need to be stored at room temperature, they are only good for three to five days with gentle agitation. So why do we need these blood bank products? Well, in the event of a trauma where minor blood loss occurs, these individuals could need packed red blood cells to replace the cells lost in a minor trauma. For routine surgery where blood loss could potentially be expected. Surgeons like to have packed red blood cells on standby to make sure that patients don't lose an inappropriate amount of blood. Patients that are anemic 
could benefit from receiving packed red blood cells. In the event of a major trauma or a massive blood loss, patients can receive multiple units of blood and multiple components of blood, including packed red blood cells, plasma for volume loss, and platelets to help form a clot. Other patients could benefit from receiving platelets, such as those with thrombocytopenia or having a low platelet count, or in the event of disseminated intervascular coagulation, patients can receive platelets as well as plasma, which will contain the clotting factors to help form a clot. So how does specimen processing for blood transfusion begin? It begins with patient identification of the blood recipient or the patient. The first, last name, and date of birth need to be properly identified. That's two patient identifiers. Next, a specimen is collected in a K3 EDTA or pink top tube. Once that's done, the specimen is taken to the lab. It's spun down and separated into the liquid portion and the cellular components of the blood. Because K3 EDTA is an anticoagulant, the specimen will be prevented from clotting. And when it's separated into the cellular and liquid portion of the blood, the liquid portion of the blood should still contain the clotting factors. Next, it's taken to blood bank where the plasma and the red cells are separated. And the red cells that are now packed here at the bottom and more concentrated are reconstituted in a 3 to 5% saline solution. Now the specimen is ready for blood bank testing. Usually an operator will get five tubes and the first three tubes will be for the forward reaction. The last two tubes will be for the reverse reaction. The operator will add one drop of anti-A reagent into the first three tubes. Anti-A reagent in the first tube, anti-B reagent in the second tube, and anti-D reagent in the third tube. The operator will then add a drop of 3-5% to 5 red cells in the first three tubes. And if the patient is A negative, you would expect a reaction in the form of agglutination in the first tube and not the second tube with anti-B or anti-D. Because the patient is A negative, they should not contain the D antigen or the B antigen. So you would expect negative reactions with A, B, and D. And the reverse reaction, using the patient's plasma, you would add a drop of A reagent cells in the first tube B reagent cells in the next tube and add two drops of patient plasma in each of the tubes for the reverse reaction. Because an A blood group A individual should not contain antibodies against antigens they have, you would expect a negative reaction because blood group A people naturally produce antibodies against B you would expect a positive reaction or an agglutination to occur with B cells in the patient plasma of blood group A. And that can be said for each of the other eight major blood types. These should be the expected reactions for each of those blood types. So that's going to conclude the sixth and final presentation on clinical lab testing, and we will jump into Unit 6, Quality Assurance, after this presentation.